Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at choosewood.com. From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Wednesday, November 18th. I'm Wayne Pratt. With men dominating the farming world, equipment including tractors, tillers, and hand tools is not designed to be used by women. If you were a five foot one woman trying to like put the the roll bar thing up or like, or change out the PTO or whatever, I don't know that it would be possible. We will find out what is being done to help female farmers in just a few minutes. Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker is implementing more restrictions on businesses throughout the state to slow the spread of coronavirus. Hannah Meisel reports. The restrictions, which take effect Friday, will close casinos, museums, movie theaters, bowling alleys, and banquet halls, but allow salons to keep operating. Gyms can also stay open for working out by appointment. Pritzker says the restrictions are aimed at slowing down the growth in new cases and hospitalizations, which scientific modeling shows could reach as much as five times the previous COVID hospitalization record from the spring. Think of exponential growth like a snowball rolling downhill, picking up speed and gaining in size. As it rolls, it gets larger and faster until it becomes something so big that it takes extraordinary effort to slow or stop it. Indoor dining has not been allowed in any region of Illinois since early November after all 11 regions of the state triggered initial mitigations. I'm Hannah Meisel. Some business owners are still pushing back against tighter restrictions in St. Louis County. Those limits include no indoor dining in restaurants. Several county restaurants are still planning to challenge that in court. The anticipated lawsuit is being spearheaded by Bartolino's South co-owner, Michael Saracino, who is frustrated the county is implementing rules that do not exist in the city or other surrounding areas. We're not being treated fairly and equitable as far as all restaurants go. We are being singled out as the uh, main spread of the virus. So we just feel it's unfair and uh, we're going to try to right a wrong. And other business owners say the restrictions are driving customers across county lines. St. Louis Public Radio's Kayla Drake picks up the story. Extreme Krav Maga is a gym in Fenton, along the southern border of St. Louis County. Steve Salzi is the owner and teaches self-defense classes there. He says he's lost a third of his customers since the pandemic began. Many started going to gyms down the street in neighboring Jefferson County, where there are no mask mandates or capacity limits for businesses. That's how it should be, Salzi says. He crosses the border from his home in Jefferson County to his gym in Fenton every day. And that's kind of frustrating that, yeah, you can we can go literally half a mile down the road and have our freedoms back. Still, Salzi says he will comply with all of St. Louis County's restrictions because he wants to stay open. I'm Kayla Drake, St. Louis Public Radio. And St. Charles County's executive is urging residents to, quote, do what is necessary to get the virus under control. Steve Ellman, though, is not implementing restrictions. He is advising residents to take several steps, such as avoiding bars and restaurants where people cannot stay socially distant and staying away from groups of more than 10 people. In other news, St. Louis Mayor Lida Krusen plans to spend $600,000 in federal money to build tiny houses for the homeless. St. Louis Public Radio's Jeremy Goodwin reports. Kirsten said she expects approval from a city board Wednesday to spend funds from the CARES Act, meant for coronavirus pandemic relief, to lease land and build 50 tiny houses. She said homeless people who move into the units in the downtown West neighborhood will have a better chance to avoid contracting or transmitting the virus. Most of the houses will have room for one occupant, plus basic amenities including a bed, desk, and heat and air conditioning. Only two units will be compliant with accessibility requirements of the Americans with Disabilities Act. This will be the second tiny house project in St. Louis, joining a development of 50 targeted for homeless veterans that is now under construction in the Jeff Vanderloo neighborhood. I'm Jeremy Goodwin, St. Louis Public Radio. Farm equipment like tractors, tillers, and hand tools is designed to be used by men. Female-friendly tools are hard to come by, and with more women farming every year, that presents a safety issue. Dana Cronin reports. 
Dusty Spurgeon has a love-hate relationship with her tractor. She helps run Spurgeon Veggies, a small vegetable farm in Rio, Illinois, along with her mother-in-law. As a woman-owned and operated business, one of the biggest hurdles they face is the equipment they farm with. Starting with the tractor. Tractors are often used to pull different implements for plowing, for planting, or for harvesting. Switching those out is not easy. You often need a lot of upper body strength. You are pushing this thing forward to fit it onto that, that part, and then you have to get it all the way on, which is really freaking hard. <laughs> Frustrating. Spurgeon uses that word over and over again. I hate it. I hate it. It makes me feel incompetent, it, like I can't do my job. It's not just changing the implements on the tractor. It's everything about the way the tractor is designed. She finds the parking brake almost impossible to engage. The fuel tank is located at the top of the tractor, meaning she has to lift a heavy fuel can up above her head to gas up. The tractor also has a safety bar that needs to be up in case it flips. It's a very heavy bar. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Spurgeon says she's lucky that she's taller and stronger than the average woman. If you were a five foot one woman trying to like put the, the roll bar thing up or like, or change out the PTO or whatever, I don't know that it would be possible <laughs> to do without like the pretty major potential for injury. Many of these features are hard for everyone to use. Spurgeon is the first to admit that. But women are at a particular disadvantage, says Josie Rudolphy, who researches agricultural safety and health at the University of Illinois. These were designed for, um, you know, people of a certain weight and certain height, pretty much reflective of, of the male population in the United States. She says farming is already a dangerous job, and for women, the potential for injury is high. So some are stepping in to help. Ann Adams and Liz Brensinger own Green Heron Tools, which has trademarked the term hergonomic. Their tools, designed for women, are generally lighter, have patented grips to accommodate smaller hands, and come in a variety of sizes. Adams and Brensinger are farmers themselves and got frustrated with the lack of female-friendly tools on the market. I mean, there were companies that painted crappy tools pink and called them ladies' tools, but we couldn't find a single case of tools or equipment in the ag sector that had been scientifically designed to work well for women. Brensinger says women have always played an important role on the farm, and that role only continues to grow. According to the most recent USDA Ag Census data, about 36 percent of all farmers are female, and that number has been steadily increasing for the past decade. To have women playing this important role and having to use tools and equipment that don't fit them, that, you know, aren't going to work as well for them as they need something to, and that might actually hurt them, there's just something really wrong with that picture. She says this is a public health and safety issue, and until female-friendly tools are more widely available, farmers like Dusty Spurgeon will continue to put their bodies at risk to accomplish everyday farm tasks. I'm Dana Cronin, Harvest Public Media. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio, music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. From the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this has been The Gateway. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at ChooseWood.com.